Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today I have a this is not a top 10 and we're going to do this video on a note that um, a lot of you have kind of been requesting and um, I got some information on the um, on the note and I was going to combine it uh, with the flower uh, but there's so many fragrances that I think I'm going to split it up. So this, this is not a top 10 is going to focus on the note of violet leaf, uh, which is used many times in uh, masculine perfumery to add this green. Um, it almost adds this ozonic type smell. Um, and there's some all time classic fragrances that I will, uh, go through with you guys. There's also some fragrances that you might not expect to be on this list that actually use violet leaf. Um, if you've ever kind of cut into the center of a cucumber and you can see that, you know, watery jelly type substance, that's almost what a violet leaf um, smells like in, in perfumery. Uh, but before we hop into the actual fragrances, we are going to do scent of the day. And after yesterday's, let me grab my... Um, microfiber cloth here. Uh, so after yesterday's just travesty of a fragrance that I had to wear all day, I needed something good. I needed a fragrance that I knew and loved. So I went for Paco Rabanne's Tenere. Now, if you don't know Tenere and you're a lover of vintage masculines, like let me show you a couple fragrances that are at least in the same ballpark. Let me do a fresh spray too. It's been a it's been a while since I've done a fresh spray. Let's see. Oh god, this is so good. Um, I absolutely love this fragrance. I have a um, this is a little 25 ml bottle. I have a 200 ml backup in storage. And um, let me show you a couple fragrances that are in the ballpark of Tenere. If you like fragrances like this, this is Alain Delon's Akitos. Uh, this is a absolute floral chiffre. Oh, it was supposed to be created for uh, Dior's Poison, uh, but it actually lost out to the current version of, of, of Poison that won that um, brief. And um, so... Alain Delon picked that up and turned it into a masculine. Big oak moss, big animalic florals. Um, there's some uh, indoles, there's civet, there's animalic portions, and Tenere does a very similar thing. But there's another fragrance that came out a couple years earlier that was issued from the house of um, Hugo Boss, and it was called Boss Number no. One. This is my favorite honey fragrance of all time. Uh, I love Boss Number One. I love that mixture of aromatic notes and animalic honey. I don't think this is necessarily Paco Rabanne's take on Boss Number One. I think it's Paco Rabanne's response to Boss Number One. Uh, because what they did is they put out a fragrance that has this animalic, pissy honey vibe, uh, but it, they have amped up the florals in Tenere. So Tenere is much more floral than uh, Hugo Boss number one. And um, it does open with this cassia, um, you know, very pissy, dirty, almost like this dirty animalic vibe. Some people say men's restroom. I don't really get that. I get more um, florals with honey and um, some citruses. And then there's that cassia note um, which gives off this, that, that pissy vibe. Uh, and then it goes very green because you get this green Artemisia, green tarragon, and then the florals just kind of take over and you get this lily of the valley, rose, jasmine, carnation. It's a little bit powdery from the orris root, uh, but the base is a fantastic mixture of patchouli, uh, leather, musk, with vetiver and then cedar, so it's a little bit um, leathery. It's a little bit woody without ever being, you know, a straight woody fragrance. It's really a floral fragrance, um, a masculine floral fragrance that, um, well, if you said this is a masculine floral, 
then you would easily say this is a masculine floral, but really they're just uh, floral fragrances that were popular to be marketed to men at the time. But I love the way that they mix in. I love the way these fragrances mix in these animalic notes. Um, it just it just really does it for me. And uh, same for Hugo Boss number one. That animalic honey and tobacco in Hugo Boss number one is amazing. There's no tobacco in Tenere, uh, but you do get this anise. Um, honey floral thing going with the citruses at the top. Oh, it's so good. Um, one of the best underrated uh, 80s fragrance. I almost never hear people talk about this. And it's an absolute shame. Let me turn my uh, brightness down a bit. Sorry, I wanted to turn it up so you could make sure you could see me because I didn't want to keep the window open uh, because of the fact that... Let's change the setting. Maybe this will be easier to see. Is the is the glare less? I don't know. I'm terrible at this thing. But um, I will tell you that uh, Tenere is an absolute monster. And um, I love this fragrance. I think it is highly underrated. And I scored a 200 ml bottle of Tenere for just a little bit over 100 bucks last year um and and now i can't find those 200 ml bottles anywhere so i'm so glad to have one okay let's get into the um violet leaf game shall we um and but since yesterday i did that review that uh i seem to get pretty good feedback even though i absolutely annihilated uh that zerzhov Sym symphonium and it was well deserved trust me uh, somebody wrote me an email and it cracked me up. They said, Zerzhov nuked from space. And uh, I guess I was a little bit harsh on it, but let's knock out the one I'm going to be harsh on again in this list. I don't have a full bottle, but I figured I would show you guys. Um, it is Versace Porom Dylan Blue. This is right up there with one of the worst fragrances I've ever smelled. Um, this is supposed to be this fresh aquatic fragrance, and that's where, it's an Alberto Morias, and that's where the violet leaf comes in, because the opening is citruses, they say it's a fig leaf note, I don't get much fig leaf, I just get this generic citrus bland aquatic thing with violet leaf and a load of ambroxan. It's so bad. If you wear Dylan Blue, uh, you should just do the exact same thing that I did with my um, symphonium sample and put it in the trash. You know, it's, it's terrible. Um, Dylan Blue is an absolute travesty. You should not wear this if you're the type of person that is watching fragrance reviews. That's for, that's more for the masses. Okay, let's get to the, uh, fragrances that have violet leaf that I actually like. And this is an all-time classic. And this one, um, kind of makes me chuckle a little bit because, when I watch reviews, you know, people really bash this fragrance, um, uh, hardcore. And, um, the newer, the newer school guys, let's say, the newer school reviewers, maybe the ones that don't have as much experience, they make fun of this. Uh, I've, I've seen some people just absolutely destroy this fragrance. It's Jeffrey Bean Gray Flannel. Now, this came out in 1975, and this, to me is a great fragrance. Not just a good fragrance, a great fragrance. Um, now, I do have an older bottle, okay? So mine is a vintage. Uh, that being said, I do hear that the new formulation is still quite nice, but I've never compared them. Um, but what this does is it starts out with some citruses like normal, bergamot, lemon, narrowly, um, and then they've added this green galbanum note, which was very popular in the 1970s. You had fragrances like um, uh, Aromatics Elixir. You had fragrances like number 19. Um, and so this green galbanum note was very popular with lady, sh lady fragrances, uh, fragrances targeted towards women. And um, they took that green galbanum note and stuck it at the top of gray flannel. And then they mixed in this violet leaf uh, iris floral mixture. So you get some florals. You get uh, geranium, 
mimosa, narcissus, rose, sage, and then violet leaf. And the base is oak moss. There's an almond note, tonka bean, vetiver, and cedar. I think what throws people off on this fragrance is the violet leaf harkens back to the 70s and 80s. And so they remember fragrances like this or the next one coming up, which is going to be Dior's Fahrenheit. And, um, and then they smell that old school green galbanum with florals. And I don't think modern men can take that. You know, if all you smell is crap like this, and then all of a sudden you smell this, you're going to try to make, you're going to make fun of this. You're going to say, oh, this is old school. This is dated. It's not. Uh, this is not dated in the least. This smells very modern to me. Uh, in fact, I would go so far as to say that if some niche house today put this out and, you know, sold it for $1,000 a bottle, that the same people who are making fun of this because they can get it for 20 bucks at TJ Maxx would be taking their wallet and saying, take my money, XYZ brand. Um, and they put up some 20 second video and that would be that. But um, gray flannel is not to be overlooked. If you can get a vintage bottle, do it. Um, but I really like this fragrance and I will be wearing it this spring. Uh, this is beautiful in the spring to me because of that green galbanum accord. Okay, let's do Dior Fahrenheit. This is a vintage bottle from 1996. Anytime you see the cap on Fahrenheit that looks like that, you know that you have a older bottle. Um, the newer caps look like this. That's what the newer caps look like. So the older caps look like this. Um, and anything with this older cap is a good formulation. Um, they, there, there is a point where they kind of took that gasoline accord out. This is probably the most famous violet leaf fragrance for men. Uh, this is a uh, Maurice Roger and Jean-Louis Suizak creation. And uh, this uses some very interesting notes. The top is citruses with hawthorn, uh, mace, and chamomile. The violet leaf is in the mid, but you really almost get it right away. Uh, and there's even this uh, honeysuckle accord, which is a very rare um, note to be in a men's perfume. Uh, so there is honeysuckle, there's jasmine, there's carnation, lily of the valley, nutmeg, sandalwood, cedar. And then the base is where the next couple big notes come in, which is leather and patchouli. Uh, and as you can see, I mentioned leather and patchouli in Tenere, and this is uh, one year after. Um, this is um, 1987, I believe. This is 1988. So the leather patchouli base was very popular at the time, and I love it. Uh, I absolutely love this fragrance. Uh, and so... Um, both of them. I love both of them. I love that leather patchouli combo. Uh, but if you want a classic example of a um, of a violet leaf accord, check out Fahrenheit. It is an absolute um, classic. The violet leaf in this is textbook. This is one of the um, best designer masculines of all time. And of course, there were flankers. I'm not going to include the absolute because that uses more violet instead of violet leaf. There is still a violet leaf accord in the parfum, uh, although it's much more toned down. If you're interested in really smelling and learning about violet leaf, go for the original EDT. The parfum came out in 2014 and they um, toned down that violet leaf opening uh, and they amped up the bourbon vanilla absolute so the vanilla is amped up and to me it's a you know it's a little bit um almost i almost feel like they should have just named this something else they were you know trying to make money off of the fahrenheit name i understand they're trying to keep it going and do flankers and stuff like that and that is what demashi was good at and this is a good fragrance it's not a bad fragrance it's just a little too sweet it's a little too generic and um 
it doesn't have as much to do with um, the violet leaf or the original EDT. It, it probably should have had its own name and been its own fragrance. Uh, but there is still a violet leaf accord. You could think of this as Fahrenheit for beginners. You know, honestly, unless you are just kind of a, um, unless you're somebody that maybe only has a couple bottles, if you're someone like us and you're really big into fragrance, uh, I would say just go straight for the EDT. That's the one that uh, will really give you that violet leaf accord. Now, let me show you a niche fragrance that kind of riffs off of Fahrenheit because Fahrenheit was Pharrell Williams's favorite uh, fragrance growing up. This is called Comme des Garçon Girl. Now, Girl is discontinued. The, the artistry on this bottle is done by the artist Cause. He does these um, little dead eyes that are a little bit strange. And the bottle is a little bit strange, but the fragrance is fantastic. Um, imagine you took Fahrenheit and you amped up the lavender. There's this lavender, um, by the way, this is an Antoine Lee creation and he's done some amazing niche fragrances so that the lavender is amped up and the, um, pepper is amped up. So you get this lavender peppery feel with Styrax and Violet. And by the way, there's violet and there's violet leaf in this fragrance. And um, that's one thing I forgot to mention at the opening. I was having a conversation with Eura Rose month, two months ago, and he was explaining to me that in perfumery, sometimes whether you get a violet or a violet leaf accord is how the perfumer actually doses the fragrance, right? And so um, I'm not sure whether the heavier doses of the... Uh, of the violet ingredient gives you violet leaf or whether the heavier doses gives you the violet flower smell. But you will notice that um, there are a lot of fragrances that have both violet leaf and violet listed. Um, and that's because the, the perfumer can dose this material in different quantities, apparently. Uh, I'll put an asterisk next to that statement and you're, uh, let me know in the comments if, um, if I'm close to the mark. But um, there's also a beautiful vetiver in the base of this. So even though this says for boys and girls, to me, this leans a little bit more masculine because of the fact that it has that violet leaf, that Fahrenheit type opening type smell um, with lavender, which traditionally has been a, a masculine note in perfumery. Um, so if you almost want an interesting niche take on Fahrenheit, see if you can still get this. I've seen some bottles floating around for 50 to 100 bucks. I got this for like $19. It was a tester. Um, these used to be dirt cheap. No one wanted them. This was a flop as far as sales go. But the fragrance is good. This is a good fragrance. Now, um, let me go to one of the most popular violet leaf fragrances. And I think this also potentially has both violets and violet leaf notes listed. Uh, this is Green Irish Tweed by Creed. This is the vintage four ounce bottle. Um, this is uh, batch code 14A01 if you're interested. 14A01. I did that off of memory. Um, and this gives you this... Um, lemon verbena or vervain and peppermint with violet leaf and a beautiful iris and then that stunning creed uh, base of sandalwood cedarwood and ambergris that that combo in the base uh, of ambergris cedarwood and sandalwood is almost like a dna for creed that's what used to make creed sparkly um, used to get that sparkly ambergris with that soft, smooth, silky smooth sandalwood. Um, almost like I've said before in some of my videos that R Rogers, Roja's DNA, uh, is this Rose de Mai, Jasmine from Grass, Violet, um, trio of florals that you smell, uh, in his fragrances. Creed's DNA was in the base and, um... They created this beautiful base that you used to get in the old bottles, the old um, four ounce, 120 ml or 75 ml bottles. Those are the ones you want pre-2017, 2017 or before if possible. I feel like there were some reformulations that happened 
um, and then BlackRock bought Creed, and there were probably more reformulations that happened. Um, but uh, as far as a violet leaf note that uh, is very pleasant, you can wear this any time. I prefer to wear this in the spring and the summer when it's a little bit warmer. Um, it's 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 uh, it's one of the best spring fragrances ever created, and it's a Pierre Bourdon, uh, one of the best perfumers of all time. Parfumo finally has Pierre Bourdon listed as the perfumer, um, not Olivier Creed, and, and I do give them a hat tip and appreciation for that. Now, I'm going to show you a fragrance that I actually have never shown before on my channel because this is my wife's bottle. I had to raid her collection, which she doesn't really have one. She just has a couple fragrances that uh, I've bought her over the years, but um, this actually has a violet leaf note in it, so I figured I would include it. This is Aventus for her, and it was sitting on my kitchen, or my uh, bathroom counter. I tried to tell her to put it away many a times, but uh, it's on the bathroom counter, so it's a little dirty. And um, Aventus for her is a fruitier uh, take on Aventus that uses this um, green apple and Calabrian bergamot, pink pepper, and then violet leaf in the opening. So you get the violet leaf, and then you get this beautiful rose. Parfumo says Mysore sandalwood, but this came out in 2016. Um, so there's no way that there is Mysore sandalwood in here. This is a 2018 bottle. This is a 75 ml bottle, I think. Um, yeah, 75 ml. Um, and Aventus for her, um, is just like almost this fruitier floral take on Aventus. There's peach, there's black currant. It's actually very succulent smelling. Um, the violet leaf hits you right dead smack in the opening and then just gets taken over by this fruity, um, floral, uh, take. And, um, it's a good fragrance. It smells great, uh, on, on my wife. Okay, next we are going to do a modern niche fragrance, and this is a flanker of the great Interlude, and it's called Interlude Black Iris. Now, I held off on buying this fragrance for a long time because I wasn't happy Amouage was doing a flanker. Uh, this came out in 2020, and so what they did, they made a couple tweaks, but they still kept the DNA of Interlude, and I like that. Um, but this is kind of where Amouage started its decline to me. They never used to do flankers before. And um, so what Pierre Nagrin did is he basically kept the interlude DNA of oud and patchouli and vanilla and myrrh and, and frankincense and all that stuff. And in the opening, um, there was an oregano note that used to really put people off uh, in, in the beginning of the fragrance. Uh, and they, they turned the oregano note down in the opening and they added a violet leaf note to the opening. So when you first spray this, you get hit with this rosemary violet leaf mixture. And then of course in the background is all the stuff that makes interlude interlude, that smoky frankincense, you know, you feel like you're in a, like in an opium tent or something. And they amped up the Oris Absolute, which is a very expensive, excuse me, ingredient. Oris Absolute is not a cheap ingredient to just throw in there. Um, so, and I love Oris. I love the, um, I love Iris, Oris, whatever you want to call it. Oris Butter, Iris are, are pretty much the same thing, you could say. Uh, and it's beautiful here. And so after I got this, I got this at a little bit of a discount. I started to have hope again. Maybe Amouage isn't going in the wrong direction. And then they just went way into left field with Interlude 53. Uh, and then those light green ones that I don't like. Um, there were a bunch of releases that are not Amouage's to me. Um, and then finally, the nail in the coffin uh, was Boundless, which isn't a terrible fragrance. It's just... I blind bought it and I was a little bit disappointed, but as far as Violet Leaf goes, this is probably one of the better final releases. Um, even though it's a flanker, it actually is a good fragrance, but maybe owning both like I do, 
is a little bit redundant, but I like this DNA enough that I'm not I'm not upset with this. And I got this at a little bit of a discount. Okay, now here's a violet leaf fragrance that I'm not the biggest fan of. There's something in here that puts me off a little bit. It's a good fragrance, and it's definitely a brave designer release. This is called Cartier's L'Enval, in one of the most beautiful bottles, actually. Uh, the older, this is a tester, uh, and so it doesn't have the very thin breakable glass that the uh, previous bottles have, but the old ones you could actually take this out uh, and it would be left with this beautiful piece of glass work. Uh, so what they did with this is you can pop the atomizer up, you can spray, and then you can close it and throw it in your bag or something and it won't spray. Um, but this is the Eau de Parfum. There's also an Eau de Toilette. The Eau de Parfum is lavender, Artemisia and sage at the top, mid of violet leaf and pepper, and the violet leaf is very apparent in this. It adds this weird watery mixture to an otherwise, you know, formula that you wouldn't expect it to because there's honey, there's iris, there's guyac wood, there's some synthetics like amber wood, uh, and then there's patchouli, cedar, and vetiver. Um, so you get this this is a very strange fragrance to me. There's something about it that kind of puts me off. Maybe it's the musk. Maybe it's the fact that I like my honey more like this. I like Boss Number One style honey. This is kind of a fresher take on honey. Like if you wanted to wear a honey fragrance and you wanted to wear it in the hotter weather and you were more, let's say, weather appropriate, you wanted to wear something that was more weather appropriate, this is more of a fresher take on honey. Brave release from, from a, a designer house like Cartier. I have to give them that. Uh, okay, next is going to be a fragrance that I absolutely love, and I'm so glad I have an early release bottle. This came out in 2007. This is a 2008 bottle. It's called Tom Ford for Men. I keep trying to get that reflection off the screen for you guys. Sorry about that. Um, beautiful bottle. Uh, and... Tom Ford for Men is a release that uh, came out by Vez Cesar, and uh, 2007 is the date. Uh, this is a fresh opening of ginger and basil, beautiful opening combo with these citruses, um, lemon, bergamot, and then mandarin orange, but it's the violet leaf in the top that adds that little bit of kick. And then what I love about this fragrance is even though I would consider this a citrus fragrance, it has these heavier notes underneath. So Cipriol, which I love, which just really started to get used right around this time. This is one of the first fragrances to really use that Cipriol note um, in, 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 a, in a way where it was really noticeable. Uh, and then you get this tobacco leaf, which is beautiful. You get orange blossom and grapefruit blossoms. You get pepper, it's peppery. And the peppery mixes with that violet leaf to give off, to my nose anyways, very masculine fragrance. There's oak moss in the base, uh, there's leather, there's vetiver, there's Virginian patchouli, cedar, and amber. Great uh, masculine fragrance, and this is a wonderful fragrance for spring and summer to me because it's fresh, but it's not so citrusy fresh like... Um, you know, Chanel, Pour Monsieur or something where it's just a citrus blast or Eau Sauvage or something. There's more underneath and that's what I like about this fragrance. So this is a winner for me and apparently it has been through reformulation. So if you can get an older bottle, do it. That's a 2008 bottle. Okay, now we're going to go to another strange fragrance and this is one that I would love. I would absolutely love a vintage to compare, but I only have a modern one, I think. Uh, I think it's still available for purchase. It's called Vermeil for men uh, in the lighter bottle. It almost looks like a flamethrower or something. Um, and this is kind of like the spicy take. It came out in 2000 and actually I don't know when it came out. I thought it came out like at the turn of the century, 2000 or 99 or something like that, but I'm not sure. Um, this has a bunch of strange notes that come together, and that's why this is a weird one, because it starts off with old school galbanum, which I normally love, and black currant, so it's fruity, um, and it's green, 
but it's also citrusy from the bergamot and mandarin orange. And then once it hits the heart, you get a huge floral heart. Uh, and that mixture of green, fruity, and florals is usually a winner. Uh, they also have thrown the violet leaf in to, to make sure that it stays, you know, it gives off a little bit of that ozonic touch. Um, so there's carnation, geranium, jasmine, lily of the valley, freesia, ylang-ylang, rose. Look at the floral heart. Uh, and then there's coriander, and then there's violet leaf, and that's just the heart. And then the base is patchouli, vetiver, cedar, oak moss, and musk. A fragrance you would think I would love. Um, let me grab a tester strip, because I want to spray this. It's been a while. Let's see. Entertain yourselves. All right, let's take a look. Let's let that settle down for a bit. Um... Yeah, it's just, it's, it's a strange one. It's, 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 it's strange in the way Cartier's L'Enval is strange to me. They're completely different fragrances. Sometimes, I feel like sometimes Violet Leaf um, adds this, um, adds this very strange feature to a fragrance. Um, it's a little weird, if you will. Um, I like it. I don't love it though. I wonder if I would love a vintage. I wonder if there has been a reformulation by this house. This is the only thing I know from this house. I don't know anything else from this house. Do they even do other fragrances? I have no idea. Um, but this is a cheapie, to be fair. It feels like it would have came out in 1980 instead of... Um, instead of uh, whenever it came out in 2000 or 99 or I, I can't remember exactly the days. It feels like it would have came out in the 70s or 80s, but I don't think that was the case. Um, I'll have to look up and see if I can get a exact date. Um, but the, it's here because of the violet leaf. There's a lot going on, that's for sure. If you like complex fragrances, it's definitely one to check out. But for some reason, there's just something about it that just doesn't do it for me in the way that a fragrance like this or like this, you know, does it for me. Um, or even Boss Number One. It, it doesn't do it for me in that way. It's not on that level. But I need to give it more wares. Uh, it seems to be a, a good fragrance. Okay, next is a fragrance I know I'm much more familiar with. Uh, this is Homage à l'Homme by Lalique. Beautiful Tesseract looking bottle. I love this bottle, like entering another dimension. Uh, and uh, this is a good fragrance. Uh, this is actually to celebrate, I want to say the 20 year um, anniversary of Lalique actually doing fragrances because for the longest time, all they did was make the bottles. Um, and so this has saffron bergamot, and violet leaf. Again, very strange opening, um, but it works so well. There's also violet in this. So there's violet and there's violet leaf. Black pepper, pimento leaf, musk, oud, and citrus. And that oud is a very Western oud. Don't be put off by the oud in this. Very wearable. Uh, this is a Christine Nagel creation. Maybe my favorite Christine Nagel, actually. I really like what she did with this fragrance because it's a little bit peppery. It, there's a little bit of that oud to add the Middle Eastern vibe, especially oud with saffron. And then you get that violet leaf that really comes in and just adds that ozonic, uh, watery quality to it. Um, so I really like that combination. Now, one very similar fragrance to uh, Vermeil in the way that I'm not very familiar with this. I need to wear this more. I've been waiting for summer, but I will give this a full wear very soon. This is called Biblos for men, and this is a discontinued fragrance. Um, this is a splash, uh, and this basically uses violet leaf straight away in the opening. Uh, in the 90s, ozonic uh, marine fragrances were really starting to catch on. This was right before the really aquatic wave came and washed everything away. Uh, so there's bergamot, there's cardamom, lime, lemon, and then violet leaf straight in the opening. 
And then you get this greenness. So you get this Artemisia tarragon with lavender. The lavender is very apparent here uh, with nutmeg and thyme, uh, which are two great spicy notes that mix together. And then the base is oak moss, musk, uh, patchouli, vetiver, and cedar. So it's a 90s fragrance that almost feels like it feels like it wants to have a little bit of a marine quality. Maybe that violet leaf and, and lavender mixture and, and white musk kind of feel that way to the nose. But uh, the notes almost give off the sense that it's like an 80s fragrance. But it is discontinued, but it's not super expensive. You can still have this for a relatively good price. Um, so if you're a big vintage hunter like me, that might be one to grab. Another one that hasn't gone insane in price yet, but is discontinued, is this. This is Narciso Rodriguez. For him, this is the Eau de Toilette. Uh, the EDT is what I prefer. I like it more than the EDP. Um, and the violet leaf in this is actually stunning. This is front and center violet leaf. Uh, this is one of the best Francis Kirkjohn creations as well. Uh, it's violet leaf with musk, patchouli, and amber. It almost gives off this... Uh, wet earth, the soil type of cord. Uh, some people say concrete. Uh, some people say wet earth. And I, I could see both. I could see stepping in wet earth and then standing on concrete. And, you know, the soil rubs off of your, off of your boot onto the concrete. And then you smell it. It gives off that vibe, you know, almost like it just rained and hit concrete. And uh, it's beautiful for a rainy day. But the violet leaf is one of the most important ingredients in this fragrance. So good. Um, can't wait to wear this more once we hit these rainy spring days. We almost had a tornado yesterday in Texas. So, um, you know, these thunderstorms come in out of nowhere. Those, that's a great fragrance to wear. Okay, another fragrance that is... I actually put this in my cheapy list. I noticed that they changed the packaging a bit. So I think this is the older one that has the leather band around it as you can see it's just a leather like wrap um i think now it's just like a regular label everything always gets cheaper as the years go on this is montana graphite by the way this has been featured many a times i told you it made my cheapy list it also made my perfumers portfolio when we were talking about nathalie lorson this is a nathalie lorson creation and she did something that is just classic Nathalie Lorson here. She used, um, uh, she used these resinous notes underneath. So there's Gayak wood and benzoin and frankincense. Uh, and she mixed it with that uh, classic black pepper that she loves using. She loves using black pepper. You find it over and over again in her creations, this peppery. Um, so in this case, it's black pepper with cedar leaf and then Violet Leaf. Uh, and so this is another one that is weird. You know, I, Violet Leaf, I guess the Violet Leaf can sometimes give off that weird accord. I said L'Enval was a little strange. I said Vermeil was a little strange. And this is one that also can be a little strange. Um, but it is a fantastic value for money. If you are someone who is value hunting and you want a good quality fragrance but you don't want to spend a ton, check out Graphite. This is 11 years old now. Uh, this came out in 2011. You have to like spicy, woody fragrances. The Gayak Wood and Sandalwood are Nathalie Lorson's signature. I mean, she is classic using those type of notes with black pepper. But then she's added that violet leaf note that mixes with, look at the color of the juice. It almost gives off this um, benzoin, um, styrax-like feel. You know, it's a little bit resinous. It, it almost feels like it could be boozy. And, and if you look at this leather wrapping, it almost feels like there's a bit of a leathery undertone to it all. So that's the fragrance. Uh, it is violet leaf and peppery at the top and a, and a tad citrusy. And then you get that leathery, Gayak sandalwood feel, and then you get that boozy benzoin, frankincense, oak moss all down below. Fantastic fragrance, especially for under 30 bucks for 100 ml. Absolute steal. Um, okay, 
Next, we're going to go to a niche fragrance, and this is a fragrance that uh, uses some notes that I love, like patchouli. Uh, there's a mate, uh, mate absolute note, which I absolutely adore in this fragrance. The patchouli's front and center, though. Uh, this is called Tempo by D Diptyque, and then the Violet Leaf. Uh, violet Leaf and patchouli are, especially when they're front and center, are combos that are not regularly seen. So even though this is a patchouli, it's not just a patchouli fragrance. Um, there's more to it than that. And I feel like they did a, a really good job highlighting the note of patchouli while making it unique with the violet leaf, the mate, the clary sage. It is a little bit peppery as well, but not like Nathalie Lorson's pepper. Her pepper is unique to my nose for some reason. Um, and then maybe there's a touch of citruses, but they just get swallowed up by the other notes. But if you are interested in, in a unique take on patchouli, check out Tempo. Good fragrance. And I actually really like the House of Diptyque. Um, I think they're an underrated house. Okay, now we're going to do a designer again, an old school designer from uh, 22 years ago. This is Burberry Touch for men. And this... Um, this is violet leaf and, and white musk to my nose with some woods, and that's pretty much it. Uh, maybe there's some pepperiness, maybe there's some, um, there's a Divana note listed as well, but it's really violet leaf and white musk, and um, th those are the notes. This is a classic, easy to wear violet leaf. Imagine if you took you know, Narciso Rodriguez and just made it so much easier to wear. You would almost come, you would distill it down to something like Burberry Touch. And um, Jean-Pierre Bethout uh, created this fragrance with Fermaniche. And uh, this was an absolute hit. I remember wearing this to clubs when I was younger. You know, I used to wear this all the time. Um, I don't know who used to distribute Burberry's fragrances, but, um, you know, look, look how <laughs> Burberry's juices, they all almost turn, they all start looking like that for me. Like, um, my Burberry for men has the same thing. Like there's a bunch of stuff floating in there, but it's a great fragrance. I don't know about reformulation. I don't know if it's even still available or discontinued. Uh, but if you wanted a take on a violet leaf that is super easy to wear and mass appealing, Burberry Touch would be one that I would recommend checking out. All right, now we're going to do a discontinued fragrance that I am so glad I have 100 ml of because it's getting harder and harder to find and the prices are getting outrageous. This is Gucci Porom 2, or Dur, if you're English. Um... And this, it, I love this bottle presentation. Look at that, and look at the color of the juice. Tell me that's not stunning. Look at this cap. I love this. Uh, oh, the scent is so good too. It's, it's violet leaf with black tea, uh, and there is white musk in the base of this as well, but it's almost like, it's almost like you get this resinous, um, spicy woody musk feel in the base because there's pimento there's cinnamon uh there is myrrh there is olive wood there's even a tobacco note but don't think tobacco like you're thinking tobacco it's not um it's not like uh an out and out tobacco fragrance um uh, I feel like if there is a tobacco note, it's almost like a phantom tobacco note to add some um, depth, or, you know, to add some, some layers to the fragrance, if you will. Uh, but the black tea in this, the violet leaf in the opening and the black tea just give off this very, look at the color of the juice. Um, it is a very calming, this is a very calming, if you just... You know, if you've had a terrible day and you just want to come home and spray on something that's very calming, uh, relaxing, you know, almost woo-saw, you just want to take it easy and you want to calm yourself down, this is the fragrance I would recommend. It's so easy to wear. This and uh, Star Walker from Mont Blanc are, are almost two 
uh, sides of the same coin to my mind. This is the better fragrance, obviously. Hands down, the better fragrance. But Montblanc Starwalker is no slouch. That one has a bamboo note with tea. This one has violet leaf and tea. But they both kind of reach the same destination, if you will. I love Gucci Porom, too. I also love Gucci Porom, the original from 2003. Uh, but we'll talk about that some other day. Okay, next I'm going to show you a decant. This is a Roja Parfum. Uh, and this is called Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Now, this is discontinued, unfortunately. This is a good fragrance. It's a very complex fragrance. This is another one that has both violet and violet leaf in them. And what you get is you get this aldehydic floral start, fruity floral. Okay, so there's May Rose, there's Jasmine from Grass, there's uh, Violet, again, the Rosia signature, right? With chamomile, apple, black currant, strawberry, raspberry, plum. Um, there is uh, Violet Leaf in the base with clove, saffron, cedar, fir balsam, sandalwood, oud, cotton candy, vanilla, cacao, leather, musk. There's even a banana note in here. There's everything going on. Uh, but really what you get is this fruity floral combo, aldehydic start with some fruity floral combo, uh, and then you get that oud that you smell in the other um, Middle Eastern fragrances from Roja. That, that, they use that oud over and over and over again, I feel like. And I don't know about real oud or fake oud. I will defer to the brand on that one. If the brand says it's real, uh, it's real. If they don't say it's real, then it's probably not real. If you stuck a gun to my head and said, pick one, Ramsey, I would probably say mostly not real, mostly the same synthetic oud and everything else. But um, maybe there's a drop of real oud to say there's real oud. I, I don't know. Uh, but... Um, I will say that uh, for the warmer weather, if you want to wear an oud in warmer weather, the mixture of all these notes, and violet leaf is a part of it, uh, adds up to a pretty amazing fragrance. Uh, easy to wear. Surprisingly easy to wear, because it's this uh, fruity take, but it, then, then it almost feels like a bit of an oriental fragrance because of all the crazy stuff going on in the base. Saffron, patchouli, cacao, vanilla, even that cotton candy note, which you would think I hate, but it's buried in all this other stuff going on. So, um, insane take uh, that I thought I would share with you guys since it has that violet leaf note. Uh, and then we're going to go to a decant. This is called Tuxedo by YSL. This is one of their two $300 fragrances, fragrance line from YSL. And the whole line, I've never smelled anything that I really like. Um, this is maybe the closest thing to a good fragrance from that line to me, that niche line that YSL does. I, I think it's pretty bad, to be honest with you. That entire line is crap. And that's the reason why I only have a decant. Um, this is out and out violet leaf with pepper, uh, and then bourbon vanilla. Those are the main notes. Violet leaf pepper, bourbon, vanilla. And then you get this, there's a little bit of florals that come through, but they smell like florals that you would smell on like an alien planet. They don't smell real. They don't smell convincing. They just smell, I don't know. They almost feel, they almost smell like um, they were quickly and badly thrown together. And then it says there's ambergris in this you probably just get this huge dose of ambroxan. Uh, so violet leaf, pepper, ambroxan, vanilla. And that violet leaf vanilla combo is strange. Um, Parfumo says this is top 31 in unisex perfume. So people hear that this is a good fragrance, they grab it and they buy it because other people say it's a good fragrance. I doubt many people are smelling this and going, wow, that's really amazing. At least I wouldn't think so. It's um, it's probably one of those fragrances that 
you could it would be easier to digest if it was fifty dollars instead of two fifty or three fifty or I don't even know what the pricings are on those uh, niche YSLs. I'll, I'll never buy a full bottle, anyways. Um, next, we're gonna go to a Bertrand du Chaffour, and this is called Sartorial. And Sartorial is uh, probably one of my favorite metallic fragrances, if you will. Um, this is the reason I never went for H24. Well, I don't think H24 is a good fragrance anyways, but they both have this metallic type vibe. Um, this uses metallic notes uh, with violet leaf and aldehydes at the top to almost give off that, um, you know, that tailor vibe. You go to a tailor and you smell the, pre the pressed pants and it gives off the steam and stuff like that. This is a fougere that uses notes that I love, like myrrh, honey, leather, beeswax, um, oak moss, stuff like that, stuff that I really like, but then at the top, it's unique because it has that barber shop, um, you know, that um, tailor-like vibe. I think the point of this was to actually be like you're walking into a tailor, uh, and that's why there's the metallic notes with ginger and violet leaf and stuff like that. Great fragrance, full bottle worthy, probably the only Penn Halligans in my mind that is full bottle worthy. Um, so that is Sartorial. And then we're going to do an MDCI, and it is Invasion Barbar. Now, this is a barbershop fragrance with a violet leaf accord, and that's pretty much what it is. It's violet leaf um, with lavender, and uh, there's some spice, there's some. Uh, citrus spiciness, there's bergamot, grapefruit, cardamom, ginger, white thyme, and then musk, bourbon, vanilla, and patchouli. And really, it's a barbershop fragrance with a ozonic violet leaf opening with a huge dose of lavender. Um, it's nothing, you know, it's again that violet leaf vanilla mixture, which is very similar to um, what they've done with Tuxedo. Just a different take. I actually think I maybe prefer... Invasion Barbar over Tuxedo. That's how bad these uh, these YSL niche fragrance line. I mean, I can't believe they're charging what they charge for some of this stuff. Uh, but this is um, by far second place in my mind because Chifra Palatine, Palatine is the best thing MDCI has ever done. Um, Invasion Barbar. I mean, if you like fragrances like Bois de Portugal or um, you know, New York Intense by, uh, by What's-Her-Face, um, the Gar the Garlon, uh, relative, um, then, uh, check out MDCI's, uh, Invasion Barbar. It's a good, it's a good fragrance, but it's nothing special. It's definitely not full bottle worthy. She for Palatine is full bottle worthy, but I want an old bottle. Okay, my number one pick for Modern Violet Leaf Fragrances. I saved it for the end as usual. Obviously, the beginning of the um, video was all about the classics that use Violet Leaf in the best way. Um, stuff like this, stuff like this, um, stuff like this. So we covered the classics. Now I'm going to show you guys my favorite modern Violet Leaf fragrance. And if you notice behind me, there's a bottle missing somewhere right here. It's this, and this is going to be the thumbnail. This is Portrayal Man. This is one of the most underrated fragrances of all time. From oh god, it's so good, um, and it's a very simple fragrance. It's violet leaf, vetiver, and Canary Islands juniper, with what smells to my nose like some patchouli. Um, and maybe some woods, like maybe some cedar or something like that. I, I don't know the wood. They only list three notes. They only list violet leaf vetiver and Canary Islands juniper. I'm guessing there's more to it. Uh, the Canary Islands juniper can also be called Cade oil sometimes, I believe. Um, but the violet leaf opening of this fragrance is stunning. If you like the opening of vintage Fahrenheit, I would highly recommend that you get your nose on Portrayal Man. Um, look at the dent that I've put in this bottle. With my collection, that is a massive 
dent. I absolutely love this fragrance. I love wearing it in spring. This will be getting some full wears from me. And how about the bottle with that oil-like look? Um, which, what did they say about the opening of Fahrenheit? It smells like gasoline. Uh, this almost gives off the spilled gasoline oil on the concrete vibe. Uh, and you get that in the opening. This is one of the most realistic violet leaf openings ever, in my opinion, ever. Uh, true hidden gem. Absolutely love this fragrance, but I, I will give you a tale of caution. I bought this fragrance immediately when it came out. This is a made in UK bottle, but it's the older version where they wrote the name on the collar. Now they write it down here, I think. So if this has been reformulated, this is only 2019. Uh, it's only three years old, uh, but I can't speak to reformulations because I've never smelled the new stuff. So um, if you can find an older bottle, I don't know if it's been reformulated, but um, I'll do a second version of this video where I do the violet uh, flower itself instead of the violet leaf uh, focus. And so the violet flower video, we'll do a different version of this is not a top 10. So again, this is just a way for me to talk about a lot of fragrances in a in a interesting fashion you guys can hopefully learn about a lot of fragrances and i can kind of share my love and uh, passion of perfumery for you with you guys uh and we did hit 700 subscribers by the way uh so i do want to say a big thank you i'm not doing it for the subscribers but um you know that that does validate that at least the the content that i'm putting out is liked by you guys and appreciated and, and, it, and, and it is appreciated by me as well. Um, so thanks a lot again for watching. It's greatly appreciated. Again, a like and a subscription is always appreciated by me, but uh, you obviously don't have to do that if you don't want to. Um, and uh, let me know in the comments what other Violet Leaf fragrances I should maybe target. Let me know if you have experience with any of these listed on the list. I hope you appreciated and liked this version of This Is Not A Top 10, and I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.